The monetization method that has been sweeping the gaming world is now coming to Destiny. That's right, Destiny is getting a battle pass known in Destiny as the season rank system. So let's talk about it. We spoke about the seasonal artifact in a recent video, so I'm not going to talk too much on that, but we're still going to chat a little bit. First, you'll be able to level up your seasonal artifact with no cap in power. Every time you level it, you gain plus one power across your entire account, and this has no cap. So that'll be interesting to see how that impacts the game, if at all. Most activities in the game are placed at a difficulty lower than the power cap of the game. So going higher than the cap, to me, doesn't really seem to serve a grand purpose, at least with the knowledge that we have right now. But the more interesting feedback has been about Destiny's struggle with actual player power, not the number, but how strong we can get, otherwise known as power creep. Once something is placed into the game, rarely does it get removed, and the only way for Bungie to top themselves is just by placing higher numbers or damage on stuff. With seasonal artifacts, they hope to make these power gains, at least in terms of builds, well, seasonal, instead of lasting forever, thus creating power creep problems. That's the short version of that, where we now transition to season ranks. If you're familiar with battle passes from other games at all, Fortnite, Apex, Magic Arena, Call of Duty have one, Call of Duty maybe, and so on, then Destiny's Pass is going to look really familiar. You get the season rank track, the seasonal, you get the Destiny Battle Pass when you buy a season. They aren't two different purchases. Seasons are now a la carte. You can buy one season at a time now. You don't need to buy all of them at once like you did with the previous year. There is a free tier, which is for people who do not buy the season, but who play during that season. And then there's the paid tier, which is for people who bought the season and are playing during it. Every time you gain a season rank, you get the rewards that are attached to that rank and ranks go up to 100. So example here, level 25 in the free tier would get you the season's helm armor, while level 25 in the paid tier gets you an exotic. You get both if you're in the paid tier. If you own the season, this next coming season being Season of the Undying, you will get the following. The Vex Offensive, which is a new seasonal activity which drops four legendary weapons, gives daily and weekly bounties, and gives additional weekly challenges. An exotic quest for Leviathan's Breath, an exotic bow, this is only for people with the season pass, the paid version. An exotic hand cannon in Ariana's Vow, this is rank one, on the paid season pass, rank 35 on the free one. Three seasonal legendary armor sets, one for each class. You get all three at rank one on the paid, rank 25 is when you'll earn the final armor piece, it sounds like, on the free version. These armor pieces also drop in the Vex offensive seasonal activity, so if you want armor with higher stats, you gotta go play the activity. My guess is that Vex offensive may have multiple difficulty settings, and that the armor from the past gives the lowest version, the lowest stats, and then you go try and get the higher versions, but that's purely just a guess. Some more paid season pass stuff includes three universal ornament armor sets, one for each class. That seems like it's the Eververse armor, essentially. An ornament for Ariana's Vow, two legendary weapon ornaments, a new finisher, exotic emote, and exotic ship. So how long is it going to take for people to level this thing up? The following example was given. At 18 minutes per strike with a full stack of bounties, you can get a season rank in less than an hour. I don't know who's taking 18 minutes to run a strike nowadays, but that's some real casual pace. On top of that, every weekly reset will continue to give you your well-rested XP bonus, which triples the XP gained for your first three ranks that you're working towards that week. Strikes, I assume at that same super casual pace, with bounties and rested XP, should get you 10 ranks in 8 hours, which would technically mean around 80 to 90 hours of gameplay over 10 weeks or so, so about 8 or 9 hours a week to hit rank 100, again, just based on that strikes example. 
XP will work the same way that it does now in the game. I don't assume any drastic changes are happening to how that all works. You gain XP just by playing the game as you do, same old stuff. Then, when the next season hits, you start back at one. But, let's say you have plenty of cash and not plenty of time. Well, you'll be able to buy ranks on the Battle Pass somewhere in the last two to four weeks of a season when things are winding down. Big ticket rewards, like exotics only being around for one season and then never being obtainable again, sounds like a bad idea. If you're not around during a season where legendaries and exotics are part of that season's offerings, they will come back at some point in the future. Not right away, but the time frame given was six months or so, although this is still subject to tweaks. Thoughts on the Destiny Battle Pass. I have z uh, literally zero B-roll for this, uh, so I'm just going to record me reading the script. You don't need to watch the screen. Uh, you can just listen. Um, I spent most of this write-up trying to vehemently hate stuff about this, about battle passes and this and that. And ultimately, I just kind of accepted that this is how things are going to be working now. Not just in Destiny, but in most of gaming in general. It's done because it works. Like I've said before, if it didn't work, no one would be doing it. I was just trying to be mad for the sake of being mad, which is what the internet does, uh, and that's just not what you should do, like, ever. Um, the Battle Pass looks like a good chunk of Eververse smashed down into a 1 to 100 leveling path with some game impacting items as well. The best items will still come from killing the hardest stuff in the game, and RNG drops will continue to exist like in the seasonal activity. A lot of this is going to rely on the honesty of Bungie and how far they're willing to push the envelope. Could they untie owning the season content and the battle pass, making it two individual purchases in the future? Sure. Could they throw in more exotics or game impacting items? Yeah. There are ways where this can absolutely go south, and that's a worry for sure. Now, there are a couple of things I'm not a huge fan of. Number one, easily, is an exotic weapon for simply buying the season pass. I used to rail on people using the examples of, oh, you just got, you guys just want exotics to, to show up in your postmaster and you're just logging in for those people who didn't or couldn't spend the time required to go get cool stuff. And now, Bungie is literally straight up giving people an exotic for buying the season pass. It has come true. Now, it's not exactly the same as Bungie throwing in a bunch of exotics into the store and selling them directly. It's an incentive to buy the season pass and to immediately get something cool out of the purchase. Would I rather see this maybe later down the line in the past or just as a drop in game? Yeah. Would I rather not see exotics just blatantly given out and instead be offered in the form of a quest line? Yeah. What if Bungie puts an exotic in the season pass that's instantly unlocked and it's one of the best guns in the game and the other exotics during the season are bad that's just not good and that's something that can happen but then making the exotic that comes with the season pass not good is also a downer because then you feel like you might have wasted some money i just don't think anything good comes from giving out exotics in this way or any way related this is paying for early power the armor is maybe acceptable since it's technically a worse version of the armor you'll grind for later if you want it i don't think exotics should be here exotics should always be earned in some way and not attached to any payment even if you can get it later for free just just avoid this avoid this situation please um I'm also not the hugest fan of being able to buy levels, despite the fact that most of the offerings on the second half of the pass seem to be cosmetic in nature, almost purely. We don't have the full pass yet. Um, the first half of the season pass appears to be front-loaded with items that free-to-play or more casual players might care about getting. An exotic weapon, and the Vex offensive armor. Whereas the second half appears to be more hardcore player-oriented, with a ship, emote, uh, ornaments, stuff like that. 
it makes sense. You can't put weapons and armor at the end of the pass. You just you just can't do that. As much as I would like that since I'm a hardcore player. It definitely cheapens the experience for those who grinded to rank 100 only to see someone buy what they spent hours grinding for despite its cosmetic nature. This is being monetized solely for the reason that it can be monetized. That's it. Because people will buy this. That's the reason why it's being monetized. Some, worry, some people are worried about certain seasonal activities leaving after the season ends. Bungie has already talked about this to some degree, and a part of why they're moving to rotating activities is because the game is gigantic, and it's getting tough to handle on a technical level. They're worried about bloating the game too much. They also want to create more you-had-to-be-there kind of moments. Quote, it is not possible for Destiny to be frozen in place to allow all activities to live forever while also changing the world in meaningful ways, end quote. Makes sense. However, again, we talk about the fear of missing out situation that drives players to play the game. People don't want to miss out on cool stuff, which can create some anxiety about even getting time to play the game, which is completely understandable. FOMO is a big deal. An example I saw on Reddit was essentially what if something like recluse was only available during a season and if you want it after the season is over you had to wait six months that eh, wouldn't feel great is it too terrible that certain activities will be going out away after a season after all how many people are really engaging with previous season activities outside of triumphs or title grinding how many of you are really engaging 100% of the time I spent in Forges after Black Armory was because of titles or Triumph grinding. 100% of the time that I spent in Gambit Prime and Reckoning since Drifter ended was for Triumph and title grinding. I got the Shadow title for this season the week it became available to get, and I've only done the Menagerie to help others, and that's it. I have not gone in myself. Menagerie is probably the most played or, or most liked of all the activities listed here. Uh, because it's really good, and because the season is still active. I imagine most pretty active players will run a new activity, a bunch, get everything that they need, and probably not touch it again. Is that the case for everyone? Absolutely not. Maybe you really like mindlessly running forges or doing menagerie. In that case, yeah, it would suck if the thing went away for a long time. But there's nothing saying that Bungie couldn't revamp a really liked activity for a future season or maybe just put it into the game on a permanent basis. I don't anticipate things like strikes, dungeons, or raids uh, to ever be removed from the game, though. Definitely raids at the least. Uh, this sounds purely like the seasonal activity will be rotated, although this will have a to-be-determined effect and impact on how titles and seals may be earned going into the future. This will also potentially help the world feel less stat static as well, if Bungie can make physical changes to landscapes in the world. Uh, overall, the Battle Pass seems to be the future. I don't really have super strong feelings towards it as a whole, one way or the other. Most people kind of seem to be on the fence right now. How Bungie chooses to implement the Season Pass, the rewards, and their monetization policies going forward will be what decides the fate of it. I'm going to stay skeptical and say things that may only get worse from here. I certainly don't think it's going to get remarkably better. And if I were to guess, I'd say this current season pass will be the best we'll have it and it might go downhill. I'm hoping it doesn't, but I'm just going to take the jaded route right now because we've seen things go south for a lot of games. And I'm not sure that Bungie is immune to wanting to make more money. So for now, fine. Uh, let's see where it goes. Alright. What do you got? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.